and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that everybody is having a great start to the weekend or a great weekend so far. And uh, in this class, we are focusing on IELTS speaking section part two. Uh, today's topic will be discussing a tool that we use for repair. Welcome Amrit, welcome Amra, welcome to our members. This is a members chat class. To become a member of our channel, simply click the join button next to the subscribe button. We have regular live classes, so it's a great idea to subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification uh, button so that you know when we have these classes and you can get all of our tips and strategies for your upcoming exam. Uh, Amra, congratulations on your financial risk management exam. Happy to have you back after uh, your couple weeks of absence. Good to see you here. Uh, again, students, this is IELTS speaking, part two, the topic of this cue card, as part two is uh, questions on a specific topic. It's a small two minute, one to two minute presentation. Um, and uh, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there. For the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. Both of those websites have lots of videos, tools, information for the speaking section and for other parts. We will actually use the website today for speaking. So you can speak to other students and experts using this uh, website. So uh, make sure to uh, join us on our websites and uh, use all the tools as soon as you get the chance. Uh, the academic website looks like this. You can click this red button that's just right behind me, right above my head there. Uh, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access uh, to our websites. It's uh, very much worth it. Uh, we are a British Council IELTS Test Registration Center, certified agents, uh, IDP partners, so you're in great hands uh, with us. For the general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. And again, you can click uh, the uh, red button here uh, to get access to the premium package. We have a great discount code happening right now. Um, it is IDEA25. You can get a 25% discount using that code on the website. Uh, we'll have that for you for the next couple of days. And uh, you can, of course, get our apps as well, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. The apps uh, link to the websites. So when you download the app, you can link it to your web account. Okay. Amrit, I see that uh, you're telling me that you get stuck sometimes in cue card for thinking. Well, we'll talk about that, Amrit, because uh, the cue card, as long as you practice and as long as you know the steps, uh, you know what to do and even if you get stuck there are strategies to help you get unstuck uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit and you'll practice in this class and then you will not have that happen and you will be fluent um, if you have questions like Amrit just said I get stuck in the cue card what do I do basically that's the question right Amrit um, if you have questions about the IELTS or English you can always send me an email to Adrian at uh, aehelp.com. Uh, uh, we respond to emails quite quickly. And uh, for everybody who's watching, if you're not a member and you want to join the chat, uh, we will have a speaking part three class after this class in a couple hours. Um, and then next week, uh, we have live classes again, starting from uh, Thursday. So. Um, again, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you get access to these schedules, notifications, and you know when these classes are actually happening. 
Um, and you also get notified of new releases. We just released a new mock IELTS speaking interview on our uh, channel, and I'll put that into the chat. So check that out uh, when you have a moment. Okay, so subscribe to the channel, get access to uh, strategies, live class schedules. Here's our cue card, everybody. So IELTS uh, speaking part two cue card. Okay, so basically what happens, everyone, is uh, you are in the uh, speaking section interview. You have part one, introductory questions, some questions to get to know you better, and then the examiner will say that is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For this part, I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to read these questions. Think about your answers. You can take notes in the one minute if you wish, and then you will have one to two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Talk about a tool you use to fix something broken. Your one minute preparation time begins now. And then they check their stopwatch or the recorder, it usually has a timer on it, and they're looking for exactly 60 seconds of preparation time before they will say uh, your preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. So that 60 seconds is a very important 60 seconds, and it's kind of ironic because you're quiet during the 60 seconds and you're really only speaking inside of your head, your internal dialogue, your thinking. Um, but it's arguably the most important 60 seconds of the speaking interview. In that 60 seconds, you have to come up with a great idea for your answer. You have to write down some useful notes. You have to prepare your first sentence and then you have to get ready to be fluent confident and accurate during that one to two minutes of speaking. So, as a first step, you read the questions on the card carefully. Um, again, read the topic even though the examiner has read that for you. So talk about a tool you use to fix something broken. Okay, it's a tool, it's an object, it's general present tense. What is this tool? All right, so I have to clearly describe this tool. How do you use it? Okay, so the um, function, the way that this tool works. Uh, what did you repair with it? Okay, so an example of me repairing something that is broken. Um, and then how does this tool and the item you fixed help you? Okay, so um, whatever you fixed with this tool, how does uh, that item also help you? So it's a two-part question here. You have to answer all of these questions within 90 seconds of your response time, okay? So keep this in mind. You must answer all the questions on the cue card in 90 seconds or less. If you have more time, then go into detail. Okay, that's the key here. Welcome Ghazi, welcome to all of our members who are joining in now. All right, so um, first of all, uh, we recognize that here we are talking about an object, okay? And it's one of the main categories of cue cards. Uh, so we are talking about an object. And when you talk about an object, you have to talk about its um, origin. So where do you get this object, right? How, how did you acquire this object or how does one acquire this object it's quite important humans are curious when you have an object where did you get it if you have a hammer for example you know a little hammer uh, where did you get it where'd you buy it where does it come from um, so the origin of the object then the appearance okay 
uh, there are lots of different types of hammers. Is it big? Is it small? Um, does it have a nail puller on one end? Is it a double-sided hammer? Um, so what does it look like? Okay, does it have a wooden handle, plastic handle, metal? What is it? What does it look like? The appearance and then of course the function, right? So how do you use this object? What do you do with it? You hold the handle, you lift it, you swing it, you let the weight of the hammer drop onto a surface, right? So how do you use this object? Okay, so its function and then its utility. Right, utility means its usefulness. Okay, so um, with the hammer, you can uh, build a new door if your uh, door broke for some reason, right? Or if your chair broke, you can fix it. You can attach a new leg to the chair with a hammer and nails. So how do you use, uh, or sorry, not how to use, but what's the uh, value? What's the utility of the object? So origin, appearance, function, and utility. Uh, those are key points to mention when talking about just basically any object, right? Yeah, absolutely, Amra. Appearance, origin, function, and you can kind of mix up the order of the appearance and the origin. I would not mix up the order of the function. Obviously, it's better to talk about function after we know what we're talking about and where we can get it. But the origin and the appearance, you can switch. You could talk about its appearance and then its origin as well. Okay. Um, now, uh, also in part two cue card, you want to discuss the tense um, properly. So use the correct kind of language. Here we have uh, present, um, present perfect, and past tense. Okay. Why? Because if we look at this cue card carefully, um, talk about a tool you use to fix something broken. So here we can see that these verbs are in the present tense. So these verbs are looking for kind of general information about a tool that you use now, that you use a week ago, that you will use a week in the future. Um, and Present perfect is good because that also explains that kind of past to present to future. And then um, here you also see some past tense. So did, right? What did you repair, right? So I fixed, duh. I repaired, duh, right? Okay, so the tense is important here as well. Okay, so we have the object, we have the tense, um, and now we have to think of some really good ideas, okay? All right, um, so when you think of good ideas, visualize, okay? Um, and when you visualize, uh, be accurate, be practical. So uh, see yourself move around your house and locate tools that you use for uh, fixing other objects okay so what I mean by this is go to your garage uh, go to the kitchen open a drawer what do you see okay so move around the house uh, what do you see what kind of objects do you see um, artist says a Phillips screwdriver. Okay. To repair a shelf. Sure. Um, Ghazi says an adjustable wrench. Uh, good. Um, Ghazi, what do you fix with an adjustable wrench? Yeah. And by the way, everybody watching this video now or in the future, once it's recorded and on the channel, uh, learning the names of certain tools is certainly a good idea uh, in English. It's only a matter of time that you will ask someone for uh, a tool uh, in English, okay? All right, Amrit says uh, pliers. Um, what do you fix with the pliers? So with the adjustable wrench, Ghazi, what are you fixing? And with the pliers, 
uh, what are you fixing? Okay, so think about, okay, Gazi says adjustable wrench kids bike. Sure, I really like that, Gazi. I think that's a really good one. Okay, Amrit, uh, pliers. Uh, by the way, uh, an adjustable wrench, everybody, um, if you're wondering what that is, uh, that would be this kind of a device here. That looks kind of like that, uh, where you can change the size of this opening. Um, there's probably a little uh, screw bit actually right here in the neck of it. Okay. Uh, Amrit says, I fixed wires with the pliers. Okay, Amrit, is it really the wires that you fixed or is it some kind of electronic equipment, right? Maybe you fixed your TV, right? Um, by reconnecting wires, right? So you're not actually fixing the wires, you're fixing some kind of electronic device. And I've done that before, right? Where you have a broken wire, a broken connection and then you use the pliers uh, to reconnect the wires uh, and fix that uh, connection and then therefore fix that electronic device. So it's actually, uh, you're not fixing wires, but you're connecting wires to fix the device like the TV, pliers to fix my TV. I've done that before. Okay, so I know how that works. All right, um, good, so you're moving around the house and um, we've got some good ideas here. Screwdriver to repair a shelf, adjustable wrench uh, to fix a kid's bike. All right, good. Um, drill for wood, um, sure. Gazi says drill uh, to fix uh, maybe a table, okay. Um, Ghazi, instead of saying wood, you have to be uh, specific. All right, so we're really kind of hanging out in the garage by the sounds of it, okay? Um, Harwinder says adhesive glue. Um, you don't need to say adhesive glue, Harwinder, just simply glue, right? Um, how about super glue or instant glue, as, as it's also called, okay? And if anybody has children, um, you know that uh, glue <laughs> is a key part of um, existence uh, with kids. Um, I, I go through probably uh, a tube of glue a month <laughs> fixing items around the house with children. Okay, so good. All right, um, let's, uh, let's pick one. So once you've moved around the house, so don't just get stay in the garage, but move out of the garage, move into the office, for example. So Harwinder says maybe like a glue, um, fixing um, out of, uh, or moving out of the, uh, the garage into the office, okay? Um, let's go with uh, a simple one. So let's go, or how about, how about tape, right? Uh, fix a frame. It's another, another one. Okay. All right. Um, Amrit says, I think pliers are good to talk about as well. Okay, um, Amrit, you know what? You said uh, earlier at the start of the class that sometimes you get stuck in part two. So, uh, yeah, let's go with pliers to uh, fix uh, the TV. Sure. Okay. All right. Keep it simple, right? Um, pliers are this type of tool here, by the way, students, that kind of look like this. Okay, so let me uh, kind of draw it out for you. So they kind of look like uh, scissors, but they're not really sharp. They're meant for another purpose that we'll get into here in a second. Um, so yeah, let's do pliers. Let's. I think that's a new one for us. And uh, pliers to fix uh, TV. Um, by the way, there are different kinds of pliers. And just for fun, students, I'm wondering if you can tell me um, the two most common types. Uh, one looks like this, where. Um, where you have this kind of a, let me show you this in a second here. OK, 
Okay, and then you have another one that looks kind of like this. It's not the greatest drawings, but it's okay. Um, so uh, does anybody know what this type of plier is called where you have that kind of end on it versus this type of pliers? So what is this one called? Anybody know? And they're not clippers. These aren't, they're not sharp. Okay, gauzy, so they're not clippers. Um, they're not cutters. Those would be different, Zarina. That would be a wire cutter. These aren't sharp. They're still kind of flat. I actually have one uh, not far from here, but I don't want to really dig it out right now. Um, these ones are called, uh, Arda, these ones are the flat nose pliers. Yeah, and you're on the right uh, track. Uh, these ones are called needle nose. Okay. This one's called a needle nose plier. So uh, the ones that are kind of pointy, they're called needle nose pliers. And if you know that vocabulary, that's really great. And I'll show you why. So let's get really fancy here. Let's really go for that band nine answer, right? They're called needle, uh, maybe even one word, needle, no. Uh, needle nose pliers, okay? So needle note, <laughs> Arda says I Googled it. <laughs> Fair enough, Arda, yeah, they're called needle nose pliers, okay? Good, because they're pointy, and uh, needle nose pliers are the ones that I use uh, more and more, okay? All right, uh, so needle nose pliers to fix the TV, good. All right, notes. So, um, let's talk about where we got it. So origin, where did you get them? Okay. Home Depot. Hardware, 20 bucks. Okay. So keep it simple. Home Depot hardware, 20 bucks years ago. All right, that's the origin. Don't get stuck on this, thinking about this. Don't try to get fancy. Uh, just be original and be quick, okay? Name the store, be specific, be specific with the numbers, how much it costs you, and then we can be specific with the years as well, okay? Amrit, be a little bit more specific than hardware shop. You're going to remember that it's a hardware shop, so try to think of the name of the hardware shop. That will help you to be specific, okay? This is a nice little tip or trick um, to help your band score improve or be higher is um, uh, think about the name, okay? So think of specific names and numbers uh, to sound original and help you uh, get a higher band score, okay? All right, um, Zarina says Ace. Yeah, I know Ace in uh, US is a big, pretty big chain. We don't really have Ace in Canada all that much as far as I know. Amrit says cost around 500 rupees. Yeah, sure. So that's the origin, okay. Um, it's appearance. Okay, so what does it look like? Now when you're doing your notes in the IELTS, you don't need to write origin or appearance. You might just write down O and A to remind you uh, of what it looks like um, and where you got it from. Uh, Ghazi says Canadian tire, very good. Yep. Arma says long, narrow. What's the material that it's made of? Uh, pointy tip. Yep. It might have a rubber grip, they often do. Okay, rubber grip where you hold it so it doesn't slip. Yep. Pointy tip. Um, very good, Amra. So it's made of steel. Yeah. Right? The material is good to mention as well. And maybe the size. There's a lot of different sizes of these uh, needle nose uh, pliers. Um, so maybe uh, it's about uh, 20 centimeters. It's a larger one, maybe 20 cm. Sure. 
Okay, yeah, made of steel. It wouldn't really be made of iron usually. It would be more of a steel construction. Okay, good. So about 20 centimeters long. That's the origin, uh, or that's the um, uh, that's the appearance. Now um, the uh, function. So how do you use it? Okay. So how do you use it? Let's see if somebody can um, tell me how to use it. Hi, Prabhasha. Good, lots of uh, students now in the class, so we can have lots of good dynamic answers with lots of vocabulary. Um, so how do I use a pair of needle nose pliers? And just like uh, they're called a pair of scissors, it's a pair of needle nose, pair of needle nose pliers, right? So keep that uh, word in mind, pair of. Okay, it's important um, because it's got the two sides, right? So it's a pair of needle nose pliers. Okay. All right. So Harwinder says, uh, get a grip. <laughs> yeah. Get a grip or squeeze the handle to get a good grip on small objects, right? I know it's really frustrating to try to fix uh, certain items without a pair of needle nose wires. Um, the utility umra, that's to manipulate the wires. That's the utility, but how do I use it, right? So squeeze the handle to get a good grip on small objects. And usually, yeah, they have a sharp part so that you can peel wires, okay? Sharp part to uh, peel wires. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Ghazi, let's stay away from the adjustable wrench just yet. Let's focus on the uh, pliers, okay? Amrit, um, you're jumping from the function to the utility. So you're saying to burn wires, fix washing machines, the TV, um, but you're kind of jumping here to what it's used for, okay? Harwinder is much closer to what we're looking at here with the function where it says to get a grip and to peel the wires, okay? So that's the, the function of it. How do you use it, right? So hold the handles with one hand. Um, and squeeze it so that uh, you get a good grip, okay? So don't confuse function with utility, okay? Okay, sharp part to peel wires, you grip it and you pull to pull the plastic uh, coating off of the wire. Now the utility, right, is um, to handle small objects that are difficult to grip by hand, uh, to reattach wires, uh, to uh, fix um, machines, uh, TV, washing machine, sure, and the like, okay? All right, good, so uh, now, of course, when you're doing your notes, so here I'm really spelling out the notes very clearly, but you only have one minute, so you don't have enough time to write down the notes in this much detail. So you write down a short form of the notes, okay? So the notes would look more like this. So um, origin, uh, Home Depot, Uh, 20 bucks, okay, uh, 10 years. Um, appearance, long narrow I wouldn't write down, pointy tip, rubber, steel, 20 cm, okay. Uh, function, squeeze, grip, uh, cut, Peel. Okay. Uh, utility. Uh, TV. Wires. Washing machine. Okay. So 
here I'm showing you the kind of long uh, form of notes so that it's clear for everybody what we're talking about, okay? But in actual fact, in the real aisles, because I only have one minute, you have to practice writing notes in short form. So uh, for the real exam, you need to write short and useful notes like this. Okay. So, and that I can easily do within that one minute time. Okay, now Pravasha, remember everybody, it's talk about an object. So it's one object, okay, or a tool here. So talk about a tool that you use to fix something. So you only talk about the one tool, okay? All right, now um, your one minute time is almost up. Uh, but it's not up yet because you have to have your first sentence ready. This is a very important last step is prepare your first sentence in the one minute preparation time. Okay, so I'm going to do that. You do that. We're going to put together this speaking cue card response and then we're going to practice members. So a very handy tool that I often use uh, to fix mostly electronics around the home are my uh, pliers, okay? Is because it's a tool, uh, is my pliers. Okay, so a very handy tool that I often use to fix mostly electronics around the home um, is my pliers. All right. Now, when the examiner says, okay, your one minute preparation time is up, please begin speaking, you can answer this cue card right away and you can begin speaking. Uh, Pravasha, this isn't that difficult of a topic. So talk about a tool that you use to fix something. It's not really difficult as long as you keep it simple. It's really important, Pravasha, that you don't overthink the topic, right? So there are so many tools. I, I think you missed that beginning part of the class, but um, the uh, members, the viewers, were coming up with a lot of great answers for tools around the house uh, to uh, fix uh, objects. Okay. Now you should pick an easy an easy topic, one that you can talk about. So if you can't talk about pliers, talk about scissors, talk about tape. Okay, talk about a hammer, talk about a screwdriver. So there's talk about glue. There are a lot of different objects. Okay. So yes, Pravasha, I can I guess that um, by your comment. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so uh, then the origin. So I got my uh, pliers from um, the Home Depot uh, hardware shop for around uh, 20 bucks uh, years ago. I have had these uh, pliers for at least um, 10 years. Okay, now I have to be careful of how much I expand in these parts because uh, of course we have uh, more information to discuss and we have to keep the cue card in mind. So you have to answer all of those questions on the cue card in 90 seconds as I told you, okay. All right, Ghazi, the uh, tool uh, I use the most for uh, fixing is uh, pliers, which I use for many purposes like uh, fixing electronic objects like a TV, okay? All right, um, and by the way, Ghazi, you could use the pliers as well to fix uh, your kid's bicycle. So, um, you know, uh, besides the wrench, I would say the, the second tool that I use when I'm fixing a bike probably the most is, is a pair of pliers. 
Amra says, a really useful tool that I have to fix broken items around the home and the workplace is an all-purpose gray needle nose pliers. Okay, yeah, very good. Okay, um, so <clears throat> to be more specific, this pair of needle nose pliers is roughly 20 uh, centimeters long, including the handle, uh, which is rubber coated so that I can get a good grip. Okay, so to be more specific, not to me more specific, to be more specific, this pair of needle nose pliers is roughly 20 centimeters long, including the handle, which is rubber coated so that I can get a good grip. And it is made of a steel, so uh, it is quite durable. All right. Good. Now, um, let's uh, continue on with how I use it. All right. So just I'm just going through those steps of uh, origin, uh, appearance, um, and now I'm on to um, function. So how is it used? Okay. So um, the way to correctly use my pliers is to get a good grip on the handle and squeeze firmly so that the nose can get a strong hold on objects uh, such as uh, wires. It also uh, has a sharp part for stripping wires when necessary. Okay, um, now, most recently, I had used my pliers uh, to uh, fix my uh, TV. My uh, dog chewed <laughs> the, <laughs> I'm just making this up, but I have seen this happen. It's a very common uh, uh, situation. Uh, so my dog chewed the electrical cord. Uh, so the TV uh, kept uh, turning uh, off because of a uh, poor uh, connection. I uh, stripped the uh, coating on the cord and uh, reconnected the uh, wires with the pliers. Uh, then I put some electrical uh, tape around the cable for safety. And now the TV works like new. Okay, so simple fix, quick fix, okay? Just visualizing, right? Um, and I'm answering the cue card, right? Because it's 90 seconds. I have to say all of this in 90 seconds. So I don't forget about the cue card. And then if I have more time, I can talk more about other objects and other uh, fixing jobs with my pliers, but I'm still focusing on the pliers, right? Okay, so uh, the cue card. What did you repair with it? It was the TV, right? How does this tool and the item you fixed help you? Okay, so now I want to answer those questions, all right? So without, it's conditional, the pliers, it would have been very difficult to uh, fix the 
uh, TV cable because it is not only painful but inefficient to try and uh, twist uh, wires by finger or a different uh, tool. So the pliers came in very handy and now the TV helps me and my family to relax and uh, have fun watching our favorite shows. Okay. All right. Um, so now uh, I have all the information to clearly explain about a tool that helps me uh, to fix objects around the house within the 90 seconds. I'm answering all the questions on the cue card. And now if I have more time, I can uh, expand out, right? So I can add more information. Um, so I can say, in fact, uh, I also remember um, fixing uh, a washing machine and my car stereo uh, not too long ago using these wires. Um, so it was definitely a good uh, $20 investment uh, to buy these so many years ago. Okay, so I can expand on it, all right? Okay, um, Ghazi says, I bought it recently from Canadian Tire and it cost me about $30. Amra says, this pair of needle nose pliers, which is made of steel, is approximately 25 centimeters long with pointy tips. I have had this pair for about four years. I purchased it from Walmart uh, for $15. Very good, Amra. Two weeks ago, I had used it to replace the uh, seat basket in the kitchen sink. Okay, Amra, you're using it for a different purpose, but that's all good. Okay, everybody, so let's take a look at this, uh, do a little bit of repetition work, and then I want to give our members um, a good opportunity today to answer this cue card, uh, either with the same kind of subject, uh, the pliers, or uh, since many of you came up with different ideas for tools that you use around the home, I want to give you a chance to maybe talk about those tools if you'd like, okay? So here again is the uh, cue card, okay? And again, part two is not so bad as long as you have the right strategy and you are systematic, okay? So part two cue card, IELTS speaking part two. Talk about a tool you use to fix something broken. What is this tool? How do you use it? What did you repair with it? How does this tool and the item you fixed help you? Okay, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. A very handy tool that I often use to fix mostly electronics around the home is my pliers. I got my pliers from Home Depot hardware shop for around 20 bucks years ago. I have had these pliers for at least 10 years. To be more specific, this pair of needle nose pliers is roughly 20 centimeters long, including the handle, which is rubber coated so that I can get a good grip and it's made of steel. So it's quite durable. The way to correctly use my pliers is to get a good grip on the handle and squeeze firmly so that the nose can get a strong hold on objects such as wires. It also has a sharp part for stripping wires when necessary. Most recently I had used my pliers to fix my TV. My dog chewed the electrical cord 
so the TV kept turning off because of a poor connection. I stripped the coating on the cord and reconnected the wires with the pliers. Then I put some electrical tape around the cable for safety and now the TV works like new. Without the pliers it would have been very difficult to fix the TV cable because it's not only painful but inefficient to try and twist wires by finger or a different tool. So the pliers came in handy and now the TV helps me and my family relax and have fun watching our favorite shows. In fact, I also remember fixing a washing machine in my car stereo not long ago using these uh, pliers. So it was definitely a good $20 investment to buy these so many years ago. Okay, your time is up. Please put the note paper, your pen to the side and let's continue with part three. So that's how it goes everybody, okay? And you can do it, even if a topic on the cue card seems difficult, as long as you stick to strategy, you'll be okay, all right? Let's practice this. Let's go to the website. Um, this is gilshelp.com. Let's go to uh, aehelp.com, okay? So this website again is www.aehelp.com, all right? Um, let's uh, click now pay attention viewers because uh, if you don't have an account on our website now is a good time to create one because we will be doing lots of speaking next class and everybody can join that chat okay so we go to our my student account and in the my student account you click on student partner speaking that's just right above uh, my head there okay and then accept the terms enable the uh, microphone the audio system check your audio system okay and then now you can send me a message and say, hey, I want to volunteer, I want to try this cue card, and then uh, we will do it together, just like the real exam, especially if you're doing a computer-based uh, speaking interview, it'll be exactly like, or very similar to the your exam. And then um, I will give you a score estimate, and I will let you know what you can um, do to improve, okay? So here we go, uh, we already have one of our members, Arda, volunteering now the way to volunteer is to message me I am listed here as master and you send master um, a uh, short uh, salutation like hi I want to try or I want to volunteer okay Arda uh, let's give it a go are you ready so Arda here is volunteering um, and we'll give Arda a chance to give it a shot and then the next person. So Arda says, yes, here we go. Hello. Hi, Arda. How are you doing? Good. Happy Saturday. How are you? Nothing much. Are any plans for today or tomorrow? Uh, I'm going to swim with my friends like at 6 p.m. today. Okay. Um, is it? Will it be at a swimming pool at a lake? Uh, it'll be a sea. Oh, you're going to the sea. Which sea? Yeah. Uh, which sea? That's a good question. And I don't have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so where do you live? Uh, like Turkey, but I moved cities, so I don't know the name of it in English. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So it's uh, it's it's somewhere around like, Turkey then. Okay. Yeah, I'm in my villa now. I moved like city for a holiday. Okay. Cool, right on. Uh, I'm guessing it's nice weather, right? It's warm. Yeah, it's hot. It's 95 Fahrenheit out there. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'd rather stay at home. <laughs> AC is going. Well, for swimming, it'll be great. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, Arda. Well, uh, good on you to get in some studying before getting in some fun. So work and then play, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's a good way to, it's a It's good policy. Um, okay, well, let's do this. So uh, I will um, start you off. Uh, give me a nice uh, response. Um, you can go with the pliers, or if you want, you can choose a different uh, tool. 
I think I'm going to go with screwdriver. Screwdriver. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, So uh, here we go. Um, Okay. Uh, Now we will continue with part two. For part two, I will show you a card with some questions. You will have one minute to prepare and one to two minutes to speak. Talk about a tool you use to fix something broken. Your one minute preparation time begins now. Okay, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. The tool that I used to repair a shelf of my bookshelf uh, was my Phillips screwdriver, which I bought um, two weeks ago from Amazon for eight US dollars. I received it uh, in 10 days after purchasing. Uh, It came with a small cute paper packet. The plastic tip of the screwdriver is red and black. I guess it's about uh, 20 centimeters long. So I really needed that uh, screwdriver to tighten four screws, which were connected to the shelf. Um, The screws were loosed recently and the shelf couldn't carry all the books on it. Um, For a clean work, I asked for some help from my dad and he taught me how to use it. Uh, First, I made sure I was wearing my gloves for safety. Then I held the tip of the screwdriver and I stick the head of it to the screw. Then I started turning it uh, 360 degrees for a couple of times until I couldn't turn it anymore. Um, I followed the same steps for the other three and now the shelf can even carry more books than it used to before. Um, and I'm glad I have bought it because without my screwdriver, I wouldn't be able to repair my bookshelf. Okay, your time is up. I'll stop you there. Um, and now we will uh, continue with uh, part three. For this part, I will ask you some more questions related um, to your response in this topic. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, repairing uh, objects. Okay, um, good, and that part three will be later on. Um, Mm -hmm. Arda, that was very good, so that was very solid, and as you know, and as I've told you before, your English is quite good. Uh, You actually organize your thoughts very well. Uh, I think that um, the way you speak is uh, uh, quite intelligent. So uh, I mean that, um, you know, if I asked uh, a lot of, let's say, native speakers of English to talk about a tool that they used to fix something broken, they would probably use, you know, very good grammar and good vocabulary, but maybe not be as organized as you and and for that reason they might not even score as well as you would um, if they're less organized in their uh, response. So uh, here when you answered um, you had a couple of small mistakes that were a little bit awkward but nothing Mm -hmm. extremely strange. Um, Mm -hmm. In the beginning you said the tool that I used to repair a shelf of my bookshelf. (laughs) It was kind of like okay shelf of a bookshelf Um, and I I get it it was like a mental slip right like I'm talking about a shelf I want to be more specific a bookshelf so but it came out a little awkward so the tool Mm -hmm. that I used to repair my bookshelf. uh, Yeah that would be better. Yeah, um, is my screwdriver, which I bought off Amazon. It came with a packet. Uh, but if I say it was, like, I used it in the past. Yeah, so it was, you know, so that, that again, it was mostly good. And, and those kind of small nuances or small mistakes, um, it's not the end of the world. I think that, you know, this uh, response would easily earn you a band 8 to 8.5, no questions about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so for you to improve you want to you know listen mm-hmm. back to this kind of a response and then fix those tiny little arrows those tiny little nuances and mm-hmm. figure out how to say them even cleaner more accurately um, mm-hmm. and I was waiting to hear you talk about how you use the screwdriver and then I was happy to hear that you put that in after so you, you use the screwdriver by wearing gloves and then um, uh, firmly uh, placing the tip of the screwdriver into the screw and turning it 360 degrees. Um, So that was good. Uh, You forgot to answer one question a little bit, though. What was it? Do you know what it was? No, I have no idea. Um, So the card asks, how does this tool and the item you fixed help you? 
And you talked about how the tool helps you. You said that, you know, you probably wouldn't have been able to fix this shelf yeah. without this tool. Fair enough, right? Mm -hmm, um, yeah. I might have mentioned, for example, like if you're being quick and creative here, that the reason I had to order this uh, screwdriver was because these screws were unusual and none of the screwdrivers at home uh, were the right size. So um, that could have been okay to mention. But the, the, the point that you really missed here was the mm -hmm. item uh, that you fixed, how does it help you? So how does the wow. bookshelf help you, right? Like it carries books. <laughs> okay, it holds the books, sure. Um, or carries the books is okay. Um, holds the books is okay. But why is that? So how does that help you? Um, I don't have anywhere else to put them. Put the books. <laughs> okay, good, right? So it, <laughs> it, keeps, it keeps you organized. It keeps your books organized and off the ground right yeah so right. that's how the bookshelf helps you so um, that's what I would have said for greater clarity to this question is you know, the screwdriver was useful because I could not have repaired this shelf without this size of screwdriver and the bookshelf for me is very useful because I can put my books there instead of on the ground or on my better table and it helps to yeah. keep my books organized right so that's you know, what I would have used there to be honest, I don't even have a bookshelf, actually, just making it up. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get it. <laughs> but still, you still have to be quite creative, right? So you have to yeah. be, for those band nines, yeah. you really have to be, you know, just, and I agree with you, you know, you don't have a bookshelf, but I'm sure you still know that the bookshelf is used to keep books organized yeah. in, in a I proper do. place, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so... So just those little little tips. Um, and of course, to do that, what you want to do uh, in the real IELTS is scan the cue card or yeah, scan the cue card. So scan the questions, right? So look at the yeah. questions and go, OK, I, I answered one answer, two answer, three. Mm -hmm. I have I really answered the last couple? Maybe not that last one yeah. clearly enough. So then you answer it. So always remember to look back at the cue card, um, especially for somebody as fluent as you where you will have time to check the cue card, okay? Will do, will do. All right, Arda, um, have fun in the ocean. Stay safe. Um, Thank you. And Thank uh, you. enjoy uh, the summer beach time with your friends. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye, Arda. See you. See you. Okay, that was really good. So Arda talking about uh, screwdriver to uh, fix a bookshelf. Okay, uh, let's uh, take another one of our members here. So members have priority in these classes. It's good to become a member. Um, and uh, I see that Ghazi and Amrit is in here. If we have another member in here that I don't know is a member, do let me know um, in the chat. Okay, so if you're if you're a member and you're in here under a different name, then in the chat say hi, I'm Sam or I'm Gagandeep. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, we'll give Ghazi a chance here. Uh, Ghazi, are you ready? Okay. Let's see if Ghazi is uh, wanting to talk about pliers or maybe some other tool around the house. Um, Yes, sire. Okay. Um, all right, Gazi. Hello, Andrea. Good morning, Gazi. How are you? I'm fine. How about you? I'm pretty good. Thanks for asking. Um, all right, Gazi. So uh, your day has started, 9.30 in the morning for you. Yeah, in, on yes, the East uh, Coast. very active uh, <laughs> I today. And uh, by the way, uh, happy Canada Day. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, happy belated Canada Day, right? It was uh, yesterday. So, yeah. Um, and uh, you are in Newfoundland, right? Newfoundland, yes. We have actually yesterday in uh, Canada Day two occasions uh, like uh, grief and uh, joy. Okay. That uh, is taking place uh, the Memorial Day is called in Newfoundland. Yeah, uh, and Newfoundland. The same. Yeah, Newfoundland yeah. is interesting. There's also another reason why Newfoundland is kind of um, special or unique on Canada Day. Uh, mm. You may or may not know this. Uh, Newfoundland was the last uh, province to yeah, join, join the yeah, Confederation exactly. of Canada. That's right. Um, in fact, Newfoundland did not join the Confederation of Canada, I believe, until 1949. Was it 49? I thought it was 63. I thought it was even later. 
So, 49, yeah, like 49, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, the last uh, one, yeah. Yeah, and I, I know a lot about it because I collect coins, and Newfoundland had its own money for quite mm. some time. So um, yeah. if you collect coins, it, Newfoundland had its own 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 money. Yeah. It's uh, different that's money. So, yeah. yeah, that's the reason why they uh, have a memorial day. Yeah, to remember uh, the, the victim or the uh, Newfoundland soldier, they... Uh, they uh, killed in the uh, first world war i think yeah yeah all so. right gazi well happy yeah. belated canada day that that was yesterday for for us here in canada um, and um let's do this so let's talk about this uh fixing tool here uh gazi yeah. i am going to start you off and uh again uh if you wish uh, you could talk about what we practiced so far in the class or you can choose a different tool completely up to you okay okay we'll try to change uh, talk about the uh, adjustable uh, wrench yeah okay. i had a feeling you yeah from the chat <laughs> that you really wanted to talk about it's the adjustable easiest wrench. to talk about and uh, to work by it so fair there's... enough fair enough now there will be yeah. some interesting vocabulary there that you should be using but we'll get there when you're ready so here we go i'll yeah. start you off okay so um uh, that is, uh, let's begin with part two. Uh, for part two, I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to read these, think about your answers, and then you will have one to two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Uh, talk about a tool you use to fix something broken. Your one minute preparation time begins now. Uh, okay, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Uh, the most important uh, tool uh, which I use is uh, adjustable wrench. Uh, actually, I uh, purchased recently uh, from a hardware store, a hardware store in my uh, city. Uh, it is not a heavy uh, tool, uh, but it's strong. It's made of uh, steel and uh, it can be uh, tightened and uh, loosened uh, uh, we can change the uh, size the sizes uh, between 5 uh, to uh, 25 centimeters uh, with a handle uh, rubber uh, uh, i buy it recently um, two years ago uh, it's cost me about uh, 20 dollars uh, uh, i use it for many purposes uh, like uh, repair uh, pipe pipes pipes and uh, uh, works with uh, it works with all uh, different kind of uh, uh, nets uh, also i use it for uh, fixing my uh, kids bikes uh, uh, there's other uh, use. Uh, it's very useful uh, tool, uh, actually. Uh, just last week, I uh, found a leak uh, from my uh, kitchen sink, and uh, uh, the net was uh, made from plastic. Uh, however, I uh, could uh, change it. Uh, with uh, a new uh, nuts. Uh, this amazing tool uh, helped me a lot to save uh, a lot of money. I didn't need uh, a, a plumber since I got it and even I can uh, use it to help my uh, neighbors uh, whenever they have uh, a leak in their uh, sinks. Uh, it is uh, amazing, but it is uh, all the little bit, I think, to... Uh, okay. your time is up. Any. I will stop you there, and we will now yeah. continue with part three. I will ask you some questions um, related uh, to your response and to this topic for part three. Okay, uh, Ghazi, uh, not bad, not bad at all. So you're you're slowly but surely moving up that ladder of the IELTS band yeah. scores. I think that was a solid uh, 6.5. Yeah, moving on to a uh, seven, so you're you're inching towards that seven, and um, uh, it might even be a you know it might even be a seven. Sometimes I'm, I'm maybe I'm a bit hard. Uh, I think uh, at the start of this week's class, we had Sarah from France, yeah. and 
She said, you told me I'd get 5.5, but I got 6.5. So sometimes students do better than what I say. Um, yeah. So I think you're, you're definitely moving towards that seven uh, band score. Uh, Ghazi and I'll explain why so um, you had a lot of clarity here and you had a lot of good detail uh, yeah. you can be more concise and you can be more fluent so what you want to work on is saying all of this information in an yeah. even shorter way and in an even a bit faster and then definitely you'll be able to okay. put more information in um, here um, if I'm being picky with the content then uh, I feel you didn't specifically emphasize what you repaired with it and how yeah. that helped you. So you repaired your kid's bike and I think that you should have focused a little bit more with a bit more clarity on that. Like um, my uh, elder son uh, fell off his bike, he broke the front wheel, uh, so I had to replace it. I used yeah. the wrench to remove the wheel and put on the new wheels. I loosened the nuts and bolts and then yeah. uh, replaced it with the new ones. And now my son can ride his bike again. So this is very good because he gets good exercise. He's happy again. He was very sad. And yeah. uh, so the tool was very useful for me. I did not have to take the bike in for a repair shop and pay uh, a lot of uh, a lot more money, right? So that that information was missing for me okay yeah so in this case Adrian, sorry we can give uh, an example during the part two that's okay of, uh, or we need it's to... asking you for it you have to um when part two asks you for it so it says what did you repair with it that's a specific that's specifically asking you for mm. that um example if you will and then it says how does this tool and the item you fixed help you so uh, you yeah. said you, you very clearly said to me that this tool helps you to save money which is very yeah. true right the do-it-yourself of course it's very clever right? Yeah. that's one of the main reasons we have tools is so we don't have to pay the professional to come out and do it so it helps you save money and time right because it takes time yeah. to take the bike to the shop and then pick it up and pay the money and there you can just do it at home right away it's it's a lot faster yeah. so so that was good um by the way plumber it's a silent uh b yeah. okay it's not it's not plumber um my Plum, my my wife is also a second language speaker of english and and she always yeah. pronounces the b's and it puts a smile on my face every time i'm like it's not a plumber it's a plumber um Plum. so so yeah. this is difficult it's, hard for me. Yeah, just, just because I, I I don't uh, meet them. That is the reason I. Yeah, <laughs> even just, I don't uh, cut pronounce. Out the bees. Cut out no be plumber plumber. Yeah. Plum. Yeah. Plumber. Yeah. Um, yeah. I okay. hope I don't need it. Yeah. It's uh, very expensive. Yeah. So, Plumbers uh, are very expensive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tradesmen, especially these days, uh, because there's not a lot of them. So there's a big demand. Yeah. Um, I, I, so don't I, try, I don't know. I try to and... be a, a plumber. Like. <laughs> yeah, self repair man, right? Um, yeah. yeah, I think here uh, in uh, Victoria, plumber uh, per hour is around sixty dollars plus. Oh, that's charge sixty. It's yeah. uh, more more, uh, more expensive, expen uh, more expensive than a doctor. Or... <laughs> well, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's it's, it's a lot of money, no question about yeah. it. Yeah. So knowing the names of tools and knowing how to fix objects around the home is definitely a very uh, useful skill mm. these days. YouTube is very good with that yeah. too, right? How to fix a yeah. if, if you have time, yeah. right? How to fix if a I pipe. Have time. Exactly. Yeah. Not otherwise. Okay. So Ghazi, um, when you're practicing, record yourself, then think about, okay, how can I say this a little bit cleaner, faster? Um, yeah. and uh, and then practice again um, you're getting quite good at using the adjective clauses Arda did a good job of this as well so both of you did a good job here and I want to emphasize this for all of our viewers uh, you said at the beginning the most important tool which I use is an adjustable wrench and Arda did something very similar as well as this which I use um, that kind of language definitely helps your grammatical range and accuracy and fluency score so uh, keep, yeah. keep using those which I use, okay? Okay, All thank right. you. Ghazi, yeah, you're very welcome and have a great rest of your weekend um, on the East Coast. You too, take care. Okay, See bye you Ghazi. All right, um, and good 
thumbs up there in the chat, everybody. I like how you're supporting each other. So that's very good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Reet. Uh, 60 bucks an hour for a plumber um, or a tradesman in at, at least these days. Uh, okay, uh, let's see if we have uh, somebody else. There's Amrit and we have Cole Winder in here as well. Okay, great. Um, let's, uh, let's do Cole Winder first and then Amrit hang in there. Um, we'll do you next, okay? So Cole Winder, if I'm not mistaken, is also one of our members. Uh, so let's see if Cole Winder is ready. Are you ready? Okay. And then Amrit, you will come right after Cole Winder if Cole Winder is still here with us. Let's give Cole Winder a couple more seconds to respond. Cole Winder, I did send you a message just to make sure that you're still there. He haven't left for a sandwich and a glass of water. All right. Ah, uh, maybe Cole Winder's away from their station. Not sure. Okay, uh, then uh, Amrit, you're up. Let's see if you're ready. <laughs> Amrit, hi. <laughs> hi, Amrit. Um, are you ready to give it a go? Okay. Let's do it. Hello. Hi, Amrit. How are you? I'm doing great, sir. What about you? I'm doing quite well also. Thanks for asking. Um, all right. Uh, Amrit, do you have any special plans for the weekend? Um, no, sir. I'm just to go with the uh, preparation alerts exam. As you know that uh, I stuck in reading. Yeah. Um, do you have an idea of when you are going to sit the IELTS exam again? Uh, sir, I, I'm not decided yet but uh, maybe in the next month. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good plan. So I would wait about a month. If I were you, I would maybe um, aim for middle or the end of August um, before sitting your next IELTS exam and then definitely doing a lot of reading and reading practice until then, okay? Okay, sir. And even nowadays I'm reading novels. Uh, I spend nearly an hour. Yeah. Uh, to be, yeah to improve my reading skill. That's great. Um, what novel are you reading? Actually, uh, there are five novels. Uh, first one is uh, Life is Everything, uh, okay. which I read now. But uh, another one I forget, but uh, I download it. Uh, I download, uh, I don't download it from the browser. Okay, good. Yeah, try to focus. So don't jump around too many novels at the same time, but maybe focus yeah. on one novel at a time. So read one, then read the next one, then read the next one. A good way to do it too, Amrit, is read the first couple pages of each novel that you got. Figure out which one kind of has the easiest language. So order them from easiest to most difficult. And then start with the easy one and then go towards... Um, the one that's more difficult okay also um, read the ones that actually you find interesting so if you think that you know you start reading it and you're like ah, this is kind of boring don't keep reading it then switch to another one that you think is more interesting so find one that that you can read comfortably and that is interesting for you okay okay sir. all right don't read boring information um, it's not effective Okay, let's do the speaking part two, Amrit. So here we go. Uh, speaking part two, you will have one minute to think about your answer and then you will have one to two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Talk about a tool you use to fix something broken. Your one minute preparation time begins now. Okay, Amrit, your one minute preparation time is up please begin speaking a tool I often use to fix home appliances is my flyer I bought it from my near home deep hardware shop which is two kilometer away, uh, away. and uh, this uh, cost around 500 100 rupees uh, and I bought these uh, pliers two years ago because on that time I really need to fix some of my uh, my home appliances, and 
and this is a really helpful for me bending and physical compressing and a wide range of materials and it is a needle nose and made of steel approximately 20 cm long including a rubber, uh, a rubber handle so that I have an excellent grip to fix uh, some items. Recently I fixed the TV wire which is uh, my dog uh, broke last week. Uh, I fixed it very easily with the uh, crimp connection and uh, uh, I spent nearly uh, 15 minutes to fix all the wire because uh, um, all of the my all uh, the TV wire is uh, totally damaged so I go to my street market and I bought uh, two centimeter wire and after I came to home and I I just uh, and I fixed uh, I I connect, uh, reconnect the wires to the TV and uh, after uh, I put into the uh, socket and the TV uh, runs uh, very smoothly and I felt uh, very happy because uh, uh, I never call, called uh, the technicians and I save a lot of money and this is uh, this uh, tool is very useful uh, for me and so I Okay, your time is up. I will stop you there and now we will continue with part three. For this part, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Uh, please put the uh, note paper and your pencil to the side. Okay, that was pretty good. So um, Amrit, uh, I would say also, you know, a 6.5 uh, going on to a seven. So quite quite similar to uh, Ghazi and kind of the similar, same kind of advice as well to get to that good level because you have your content is good so you just need to be a bit more concise and a bit more fluent use a lot of connective words um, start really focusing on using words like therefore as a result to really connect these ideas okay Amrit however firstly uh, that is that kind of words yeah 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 exactly so firstly I uh, needed to replace the wires by going to the market um, therefore I you know spent another twenty dollars on uh, two meters of wire so kind of use those to connect and create clear more connected sentences um, also the the same advice that I gave Arda uh, really pay attention to the questions so focusing on the questions right um, how does the TV help you remember that in the example I said that the TV uh, works fine and now my family can relax and have fun watching our favorite TV shows so make sure to really answer that last question oftentimes on the IELTS on the cue card there will be this kind of double question um, at, at the very end and you really have to focus on answering both parts of that last question okay it's kind of a tricky one and um, a lot of times students forget to pay attention to both of the questions in that last very last part um, so you know before talking uh, about spending 15 minutes to fix all the wires and going to the market talk about how fixing the TV has helped you to uh, relax and also watch your favorite TV shows or maybe you use it as a second monitor for your computer to do editing I don't know up to you okay Okay, sir. And uh, yeah, that is uh, really great to answer all of the questions because uh, uh, the examiner now that uh, uh, the speaker is really cover all of the questions. Yeah, it's it, it, it's a sure way to get the best score possible for the speaking section. They're really looking for all of the questions to be answered on the card. So, um, all right, Amrit. Um, Hopefully, I will see you in the next class for part three as well. It sounds like you're outside somewhere. Are you outdoors right now or indoors? Yes, uh, no one is uh, in my shop, so that's why there are some uh, voice of phones. So. Yeah, I can hear it. Quite traffic -y, quite loud. And yes, uh, and really sorry for that. Bit. Oh, no, not a problem. It doesn't bother me. Um, life goes on, right? And these days we have to multitask, so good for you for doing that, okay? Um, that's the right attitude, um, just like uh, with all of our other viewers. So, Amrit, uh, hang in there. Hopefully, we'll see you next class. Keep up the good practice, okay? Sir, read lots. Sir, can I, uh, sir, can I ask one question? Yes, like, sure. What about my pronunciation? 
I think your pronunciation is quite good. I mean, considering that we have some interference and background noise, I can still understand you quite well. So if we are sitting in a quiet room, I think that I could understand you almost perfectly. So I think your pronunciation is easily a band seven or eight. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank, All right. Okay, sir. Thank you so much uh, for this kind of feedback. You are very, very welcome. Keep up the good work, Amrit. See you in the next class. Bye for now. Bye, bye, sir. All right, that was Amrit. Give Amrit a thumbs up. Um, good job, everybody. Good job, members in the class. And uh, we've got another class coming up in about 30 minutes that will be uh, speaking part three. And speaking part three will be a continuation of speaking part two, and we will use uh, this interface here. Um, if you want to book a full IELTS speaking interview with me with feedback, you can do that by clicking that big yellow button there. Um, it's a 30 minute session and in that 30 minute session we do a 15 minute interview and then we do 15 minutes of feedback, correction, some practice uh, so that you get a really good idea of what you need to accomplish to maximize your IELTS band score. So you can book that there. Um, again, if you haven't done so, uh, register on our website so that you can use uh, these uh, components, the speaking. We will use the speaking in the next class as well. Uh, click on the red uh, button to join the premium package. You can also join for free and try it by clicking the green button. That's just behind me there students so uh, coming up in 30 minutes again we will be uh, continuing with uh, speaking uh, part three that will focus on repairs and tools and equipment around the home um, I'm Adrian I'm signing out from Victoria for now I will be back uh, shortly and that will be an all chat class so everybody will be able to join the chat in YouTube as well as the speaking on the website uh, so hopefully I will see you there Amrit you're very welcome Ghazi you're welcome Amra uh, great to have you Amra volunteer in the next class as well okay all right bye everybody